Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV. Hello and welcome to Practical Caravan TV, the show all about caravans and the touring lifestyle. As ever, we've got a packed episode ahead of us, including caravan reviews, tow cars and touring parks. So without further ado, here's what's coming up in today's show. I try out Adria's Altea Tamar. David Motten tests the new Audi A4 Avant. And we check out an innovative newcomer from Swift. Plus we pay a visit to Post and Mill Touring Park. I've always been a really big fan of Adria's Altea range, particularly in family-friendly layouts such as this 552 DT Tamar. They offer masses of flexible, stylish interior space at an incredibly good price, which in the past has usually been less than £15,000. For 2017, however, it's had a little bit of a makeover and that price has crept up a little bit. This Tamar, excluding delivery, will cost you £15,390, which still represents fantastic value for money. So where's that money being spent? Well, look at the front of it and you'll see there's a big difference. That previously very bare front end now wears a huge panoramic sunroof at the top, which really does improve the looks. And no doubt, as we'll find out soon, it makes a big difference inside. There are some other really good mid-range features on here too. We've got a large external locker, and heavy duty steadies. Great to see on a decent sized van. It is a bit of a shame that those steadies are really quite hard to access, however. And also at the back here on the near side, we've got the toilet cassette hatch. Not great if you've got an awning up. There are a couple of little details that mark this out as a budget model, such as the rather cheap looking hubcaps on those steel wheels. But then do remember that on most rival models, you are having to pay for an options pack to get the natty looking alloys. Up front, there's an AKS hitch stabiliser, which is part of the standard UK pack, but of course, no ATC. But we're just beating around the bush here. What we really want to know is what it's like inside with that lovely new roof. And the answer is lovely and bright. With that huge overhead window, with its rather neat surround attractively blending it in, plus big side windows and a single pane front window, there really is masses of light pouring into here. And that's despite the fact that these new fabrics are a little bit darker than the old ones with their rather funky contrasting cushions and attractive leaf pattern curtains. And it doesn't feel overwhelming because there's lots of white used for both the surfaces and the walls. Apart from that, there's not a vast amount to talk about in here. This is very much a budget model. So we haven't got any plugs on the front here. There's a couple of speakers, but no stereo to power them. There's a 230 volt socket and an aerial socket, although the aerial itself is a dealer fit option. What I really like though, is the fact that the table for the lounge area is stored right here in this cupboard next to the lounge, just where you need it. The kitchen area majors on fantastic storage. I particularly like these huge drawers. They're really domestic in feel, masses of space, and of course, rather nice soft closers. There's another big locker overhead, and there's a small cupboard above and below this services tower, which features a combined oven and grill and a reasonable sized fridge freezer. And being an Adria, of course, it has the smart kitchen, which is a rather neat triple inline gas hob with a stainless steel base that drains directly into a stainless steel sink. It's a really neat way of avoiding cooking spills. I like the little protective panel here to stop your woodwork getting damaged. But what we haven't got very much of is worktop space. Unless, of course, you close the glass lid over the hob, which gives you a bit, and then noisily remove the chopping board from the overhead locker and place that over the sink. Hey presto, a good amount of worktop. If you need yet more, well, on this side of the van, of course, we've got the two-seater dinette with the table. Although it's a little bit low set, you could always use that for food preparation. It's a generously sized dinette for two, and at night it turns into a couple of bunk beds. The seat bases slide down onto the table to make the bottom one, and then there's a fold-out bunk above. 
although it does have a fairly low 50 kilo weight limit. Overhead there's a couple of good sized lockers and of course there's storage in both seat bases, although once again there are no drop down flaps to access it so you'll have to remove the cushions. At the back of the van here there's a couple of really good sized bunk beds with the top one accessed as with the middle row by a little ladder that drops into place. The top one has a 70 kilo weight limit which is a little bit more useful for bigger children. Each one gets its own window and a little reading light with a cute owl motif. One thing that's gone for the 2017 season however is the option of a third bunk at the back here. Now a seven berth van might be quite a niche interest thing but if you've got four kids who like to bring a friend with them occasionally it's actually a really useful thing to have. Behind me there's a good sized wardrobe with the very continental style Truma Ultra Heat mounted beneath and there's a socket here too although it is one of only three in the entire van or four if you count the one in the overhead kitchen locker which is there should you get the dealer fit option of a microwave and that just leaves the washroom which is behind this door here. It's called an ergo bathroom but we'd refer to it as a wet room. It's compact yet manages to pack in all you could need with some thoughtful design. Behind a mirrored wall there's a big cabinet and a drop down sink with beneath that a bench style electric flush toilet. The separate shower doesn't have a fully molded liner but it does have a built in shelf, a mirror and a useful drying rail behind its bifold door. The Altea Tamar's appeal as a family van is undiminished for 2017. It's still spacious, flexible and thoughtfully designed. But a bump up in price does make you analyse the details a bit more closely and it would have been nice to see a few more sockets inside and perhaps some easier access to some of those internal storage areas. That said, this is still a very cheap van and that fantastic new sunroof serves only to enhance its appeal. With its 3 litre V6 diesel engine, the Audi A4 Avant is a very powerful tow car. The trouble is, in this spec, it's also a very expensive one, with a price tag the wrong side of £40,000. Is the Audi worth that kind of money? As well as being powerful but pricey, this A4 Avant has the Quattro four-wheel drive system. It's an obvious plus for four-season towing, and makes for a high curb weight too, including 75 kilos for the driver. The 3-litre TDI Quattro weighs 1,770 kilos. The legal towing limit is 1,900 kilograms. We match the Audi to a Swift Expression 626 with a mass in running order of 1,413 kilos. Even towing a caravan of that weight, this is a seriously quick car, accelerating from 30 to 60 miles per hour in just 6.7 seconds. The brakes are very powerful too, needing just 9.9 metres to stop car and caravan on a dry track. The A4 felt composed in the lane change test too, at least at our regular test venue. At a different track when tested for the tow car awards, the caravan did drag the Audi wide on the fastest run. At speed, the A4 is secure and stable. Perhaps it's not quite as unshakable as a Land Rover Discovery Sport or a Volkswagen Passat 4 Motion, but it's not far off. Inside, the A4 is beautifully made from high quality materials and there are high tech features like Audi Drive Select, which alters steering weight, throttle response and gearbox behaviour at the push of a button. There's plenty of room for the driver and front seat passenger, although the sunroof does rob some headroom. In the back, space isn't quite so plentiful. A VW Passat estate has much more rear legroom for example, although compared with other compact executive estates, the A4 is reasonably accommodating. It's a similar story in terms of boot space. Next to a 3 Series Touring or a Mercedes-Benz C-Class estate, the Audi has slightly more room for bags, but compared with a Passat, the capacity is significantly lower. We're very impressed with the A4 Avant stability, superb performance and plush cabin, but there's no doubt you can buy bigger and roomier tow cars for similar money. However, if you can live with relatively modest space by state car standards, the A4 Avant is quite a tow car. Caravan launches are the same year after year, right? There are a few little tweaks, maybe some new graphics, the odd new layout perhaps, but fundamentally the caravans remain pretty much the same. Well, not so this year, 
This is the base camp, and it's made not by a funky continental brand such as Knaus or Detlevs, but by British traditionalist Swift. It's a really great looking thing, and this is just in the standard form. If you want to make it your own, then you can choose around a dozen different graphics packages to give it an even funkier look. If that's not really to your taste, well, chances are you're a traditional caravanner, and you're not really the target market. This van is aimed at active, outdoorsy types, people who are more likely to be tent campers at the moment. It's a way to bring them into the caravanning fold and perhaps create the caravanners of the future. Despite all of that, we've got most of the things that you'd expect to find on a proper grown-up caravan. There are some rather neat little steadies with cutouts all the way around to guide your winder handle in. There's an external power point and an external gas barbecue point, both part of the optional plus pack, which is expected to cost around £600. And around this side of the van, alongside the water point, there's a connection for an external shower. Just the thing for washing off muddy clothes, muddy mountain bikes, perhaps even muddy dogs. And the one thing we haven't mentioned yet, of course, is at the back of the van here, this fantastic awning. It's a bespoke awning made by Van Gogh, specially for the base camp. And it's likely to set you back around the 700 pounds mark on top of the price of the van, which is expected to begin at around 15 grand. But what does it look like inside? We'll start in the awning, because for most people, this is likely to be a fundamental part of the caravan. It almost doubles its capacity. And as you can see, it uses air beams with these huge main support beams and inflatable cross braces. The whole thing can be pumped up in minutes and then pegged out. As you can see, we're in night mode at the moment, and it provides perhaps an extra bedroom as well as lots of storage. Say if you bring some friends along for your canoeing or mountain biking holiday, or perhaps you've got young children who like to sleep outside. And of course, in the daylight, where you simply unzip these huge panels, and the light floods in. As for the van itself, well, let's take a climb aboard. And where else do we enter? But in the back of the van. This is a really generous rear door. It's wide enough to make it easy to get your bikes in and out. And there's even a little sill protector there in diamond plate aluminium. So it shouldn't cause any damage with all your outdoor gear that you're throwing in and out. Now inside, this van is surprisingly well equipped. Admittedly, this one has been fitted with the plus pack, but you do get a separate oven and grill, a three burner gas hob, and over here, would you believe it, Swift's command system. Now that was introduced on the top spec vans last year and is now across all of its vans for 2017. It features things such as remote control for items including the hot water and the heating from your smartphone. That might sound a little bit of a gimmick, but actually it's ideal for the kind of buyers this van's aimed at. Imagine you've been out all day climbing mountains and cycling down them, and you're cold and wet and muddy, well, you can simply remote into your van and switch the heating on so it's toasty warm when you get back to it. This little keypad, which arms a Thatcham Category 6 approved tracking system, which should mean that should your van get stolen, you'll hopefully be able to get it back. Now, the kitchen itself has everything you could need. There's a large stainless steel sink. Underneath, there's a good sized fridge and plenty of storage both above and below. There's masses of worktop and my favorite little gimmick a pull-out tower of plug sockets. On the other side of the van, we've got what appears to be a very large wardrobe, but it does contain the boiler, the consumer unit, and the freestanding table, so it is a bit cramped. But let's face it, you're not going to be carrying many ball gowns in this van. And in the corner here, there's the washroom. Actually, it's more of a wet room, with a moulded shower tray, a bench toilet, and an orbit shower head on a separate riser. But there is a good-sized sink, a large mirror, and a small bathroom cabinet while a roof light overhead keeps it nice and bright. And there's even a shower curtain to keep your loo roll dry. So far, so traditional caravan, you might be thinking. But up front here, things start to get a little bit more interesting. Take these lockers, for example. Or rather, they're not lockers, but canvas bags. So you can pre-pack them before you put them in the van, or perhaps use them for your shopping or a picnic. Once they're in place, you can still access the things inside by using these zips. And check out these sofas. They can be folded right up against the wall to give plenty of space for getting in your mountain bikes or whatever other gear you're bringing with you. With these lash down points fixed in the floor so you can keep them secure when you're on tow. 
As for payload, well, this van comes from the factory with an MTPLM of 990 kilos, or 1,015 if it's fitted with the Plus Pack. But if you've got the tow car to pull it, you can upgrade that to 1,100 kilos, giving you a payload of up to 221 kilos, plenty for a couple of big bikes and lots of clothes. As for the sofas, well, if you want to use them, you simply unclip these two points, making sure it doesn't fall on you, drop it down and pull out the leg. And then you can grab the extra cushions and it makes for a very inviting sofa. They're long enough to be used as single beds, but if you want to use a double, well, you simply pull out another bit of slatting on each side and drop down the cushions to meet. While I'm here, there's a couple of nice little details I'd like to show you. First of all, this panoramic window. What a fabulous way to enjoy a beautiful view. And then there's this little coffee table at the front here. If Dan the cameraman can pop down and have a look, underneath you'll find some of the most exquisite little supports. It's a beautiful detail. And over there in the corner, at the end of the kitchen, well, there's the ideal place to put your books and your phone onto charge, because there's a couple of USB charging points. And of course, what caravan would be complete without a TV mount and all the aerial sockets? Prices for the base camp are expected to start somewhere around the 15 grand mark, and that puts it firmly into Sprite territory. But of course, to compare this with a Sprite would be to be missing the point. Swift calls it a crossover camping vehicle, or CCV. And while it doesn't necessarily invent the genre already occupied by the likes of the Knaus Sport and Fun or the Kip Shelter, it does introduce an exciting and well-equipped new option for those looking to upgrade from a tent or a trailer tent, or perhaps even existing caravanners who are just looking for something a little bit different. The historic English county of Herefordshire is the setting for the popular Post and Mill Country Holiday Park in the aptly named Golden Valley. Using one of its 45 touring pitches as a base, you'll be able to explore the very best that this beautiful region has to offer all year round, including the book lover's town of Hay on Wye, just across the Welsh border, and the cathedral city of Hereford. That is if you decide to leave the site once you've pitched, of course, because there's plenty to entertain you in the 35 acre site that was formerly a farm, watermill and bakery. You can choose from a variety of pitch types, from grass with a shared water tap to fully serviced premier pitches with hard standing while the young at heart will enjoy the play area and games room. Dogs are welcome, with their own walking field and dog washing facilities, and the whole family will appreciate the mill restaurant and bar, the Wi-Fi connectivity and impressive on-site shop, which sells bread, souvenirs and flowers, as well as groceries. You can go fishing for brown trout here at the park too, and the website has details of local events throughout the year. If you don't want to drive, a bus stop just outside the site will take you into Hay on Wye, Brecon or Hereford itself. We're here in the beautiful centre of the Golden Valley in Herefordshire, just outside Peter Church. We're set between the historic town of Hereford, the cathedral city, and Hay on Wye, the uh, city of books, well, the town of books it's famous for. We're set in 36 acres. We've got touring, holiday homes, tent pitches, any sort of holiday you want, self-catering, we can offer it for you. Peace and quiet really is what we offer most, and obviously sunshine is always sunny in the Golden Valley. The facilities here at Poster Mill are wide and varied. We offer every holiday home, every holiday customer the opportunity to come from a little one-man ridge tent right up to uh, holiday home ownership. The touring area has got uh, over 50 touring pitches including camping pitches. We've got some semi-permanent, some hard standing, some fully serviced so they've got the drain pipes in there, they've got electric, they've got television, they've got their own taps. So basically home from home you can move in, put your tourer on the pitch and literally not have to go anywhere but we do have a fantastic facility block as well so if you wanted to have luxury showers uh, with even piped music and radio playing through, Poster Mill's the place to come. We've been coming to Post Mill now for about five years. This is our fifth year here. Uh, we really like it because it's uh, a beautifully maintained site, primarily. Uh, facilities are second to none. We have a better shower here than we have at home, which is a, a real bonus. 
Uh, we love the fact uh, with having our dog that we've got fantastic uh, dog field here where they can run around loose. Uh, and the walks from here across into the hills through Herefordshire are absolutely lovely and we spend a lot of time uh, walking the dog up and around the, the, the local hills. Um, the mill is a lovely little restaurant mm. that we've got here which is open most of the year and uh, do good honest pub food at reasonable oh, prices, don't yes. they? Nice, nice people who, who run that. Well, I'm afraid that brings us to the end of the show, but your hour of touring fun continues after the break with Niall Hampton and Practical Motorhome TV. I'll be back next week, of course, with more caravanning goodness, but if you can't wait till then, you can keep up with us on Facebook or Twitter and via our website. Until then, bye-bye. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV.